for more on Puerto Rico's economy. I sat down with its former governor, Luis Fortunio, and asked him why the next 24 hours are critical for the country. It could be critical in the sense that uh, by uh, in the next 24 hours, the Puerto Rico Power Authority creditors and the authority must reach an agreement. They have been extending this uh, forbearance agreements for about a year now, and it expires tomorrow. And bottom line here is that they, if they don't reach an agreement in the next 24 hours, uh, there could be litigation right away, and it could be uh, actually the beginning of uh, a whole bunch of you know other uh, legal actions that okay. could be so taken it, by under other credits as well. In other words, it's going to be a complete mess if they exactly. don't come to an agreement. If they come to an agreement, it could serve perhaps as a template moving forward as to yeah. how to handle some of the other credits that are outstanding. So everything that I've read is that a lot of creditors are asking Puerto Rico to make strong structural reforms. And if they don't make the strong structural reforms, it doesn't matter what the agreement is because they're not going to be able to pay back the money they owe, which is the $72 billion spread among various institutions. Exactly. These structural reforms, in, in your view, number one, what are the top two or three? And number two, do you think that they can get those passed through basically The legislature, exactly. Okay. Well, first and foremost, there has to be fiscal constraints. And uh, I can tell you, for example, during my tenure uh, and the legislature, state legislature went along with this, we were able to slash expenses by 20%. Expenses have gone up again in the last three years. So that has to be uh, handled, number one. Number two, uh, the regulatory realm, uh, both not just in the labor market, but also overall, uh, has to be addressed as well. Number three, uh, uh, it is Im imperative that there will be more transparency in all the data, especially economic data that's coming out. It's handled by, there's one institution called the Government Development Bank, and it has to be fully transparent with the marketplace in order for the market to react positively. The point number two that you mentioned about the labor market, I think this is fascinating because a lot of people may not realize this, but if you're a, citizens, a citizen of Puerto Rico, you're also a citizen essentially of the United States. You are a U.S. citizen. You're, you're, you're a US not citizen. a Puerto Rican citizen. You are a U.S. citizen. My, my, my point is you can travel from there to really? anywhere in, in the country. And this is, exactly. this is great news, but it's also bad news because you have a lot of smart, talented people essentially leaving the, quote, territory, right? Yeah, exactly. How is Puerto Rico going to stop that? You have to make it attractive for people to want to stay there as opposed to physicians going to Texas, uh, entrepreneurs going to Silicon Valley, uh, lawyers going ended up in Florida or New York or, or Washington. Uh, and first, you know, the taxes are, have gone up dramatically in the last uh, two or three years. If you're paying high taxes and the quality of life is deteriorating quickly, you move to another jurisdiction where you pay less in taxes and your children and family have a better quality of life. So that has to be handled immediately. What's the worst case scenario for Puerto Rico? The worst case scenario is, as you were mentioning earlier, there are 18 different types of credits. The power authority is just one of 18. If that one doesn't go well and litigation ensues and then the others do as well, without any type of legal structure to do it, all you have is uh, uh, you know, hundreds of lawyers doing extremely well for many years to come, uh, whereas the economy is going nowhere. You want to avoid that. You want some sort of uh, agreement on this that is consensual. Uh, but in order to do that, again, transparency is key. Secondly, you, uh, the government has to control expenses. It hasn't been willing uh, to do yeah. the, so. And then you need the regulatory uh, uh, and other legal framework uh, reforms. And I, I have to imagine uh, the folks that are suffering the most are the hardworking, working and middle class in exactly. Puerto Rico. Exactly, middle and lower middle class. And I'm sure there's a lot of blame to go around. And in fact, some of it may even fall on you as well. Of course, they will, they will say that. Who is to blame for all this? Well, it, it's a lot e easier to just try to start blaming people. I can tell you that during my tenure, their bond rating went up a couple of notches. The cost of money went down. And in the last 10 years, the only period of time when there has been growth was 2011 and 2012. The Are last, you blaming the last current two years. No, no, no. And I have stayed away from that. I can tell you one thing, that a lot of different parts of the society, of the economy, that includes the private sector, the public sector, and others, have not been willing to make the changes that, that are required to compete in the 21st century. And those that have tried it are no longer in government, including myself. 
uh, you have to uh, adapt and, and you have to be willing to give in uh, so that you can compete. Otherwise, others will do it cheaper, more efficiently, and you lose out in the process.